uh, the Town of Clinton's Community Choice Program Renewal Information Session. Um, might give it just 30 more seconds to see if anyone comes in, but um, just some housekeeping stuff. Just please keep yourself muted when not speaking, and uh, there will be plenty of time for questions at the end, so you can unmute and, and ask, or just write or during, if you have questions during the presentation, please use the questions tab or the questions section and just type your questions there and we'll address them uh, throughout and at the end. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for being here. Let's, let's, uh, let's get started. Um, so first off, my name's Jake Mitchell and I am a, uh, a program manager. I'm part of the team at Hudson Valley Energy, which is the nonprofit partner um, with Juul and the participating communities uh, and municipalities, including Clinton, of course. And I'm also joined by Hannah Karp, whose voice you'll hear from time to time. So Hannah, please, Hannah, please feel free to introduce yourself. Hi, hi everyone, I'm Hannah Karp. I work with Jewel Community Power, which is the program administrator, and I'm looking forward to going through the presentation with you tonight. Thank you, Hannah, awesome. Um, so again, yes, my name is Jake Mitchell. I'm with Hudson Valley Energy. And so the agenda for tonight, I'm going to start going through uh, what is CCA and how it works and, and just give you a, a basic understanding of, of the, the policy. Um, and then I'll uh, share a little bit about the, the partners and the program in general and the players and who's involved and how it's happening. Um, and then we'll jump into next steps for Clinton community members. Um, what to expect there and operational stuff and so on. Um, and then we'll take you through some frequent uh, community choice aggregation questions and we'll give you answers. And I'm sure that'll uh, satisfy some questions you have. And if not, then we'll have plenty of time to uh, go over any questions you might have. So let's go through it. Thanks again for being here. So trying to go to the next slide okay here we go so what is community choice aggregation so in short it's a policy enabling municipalities to determine default energy offerings including electricity supply on behalf of its residents and small businesses um, and basically it works as a, a buying club. You can think of it as like a BJ's or a Costco where you buy things in bulk and therefore get a reduced price on what you're purchasing. And the same exact philosophy, purchasing philosophy goes here to community choice aggregation. So in essence, the municipalities and communities coming together um, gives, uh, get, it is the power of the program in which uh, municipalities are able to give low fixed rates for their electricity supply. Um, and it's also seen as a public benefit, and we'll get into this a little bit more in, later in the presentation, but it's a public benefit uh, in that it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's a action and it's a policy that helps uh, New York State achieve its aggressive climate goals. Um, and it, it protects consumers and ideally, um, not guaranteed, but ideally, will help consumers save money as well. And I'll get more into that in just a little bit. But who is eligible for community choice aggregation? Basically all residents and small businesses are eligible, um, except for some cases, which I'll get into in a second. Um, and anyone who's eligible, who becomes uh, a member of community choice aggregation or customer rather, can choose to not participate at any time. That's one of the benefits. There's no fees to cancel. It's very easy to do that, and I'll show you how. So that's community choice aggregation in a nutshell. Trying to go to the next slide. Sorry, it looks like my computer might be a little slow. Okay, there we go. So, um, so basically, this is how electricity supply choice works for, in general, for um, with residents and small businesses. So since the town of Clinton was actually in community choice aggregation before, um, if you were in it, your electricity supplier was direct energy, which would fall under the number two option of the third party supplier or an ESCO. Uh, but traditionally before, before 2019, July 2019, before Clinton was in CCA, 
the default option was Central Hudson. And Central Hudson is the utilities, um, but they, uh, they bought electricity supply on behalf of its customers for them. So that was the default option. And I'll just give you a bit more detail about that. So in the 1990s, there was a law that deregulated, basically decoupled or demonopolized um, the electricity supply industry. And meaning that uh, utility companies, the companies that deliver your electricity and make sure you have electricity, like Central Hudson, those companies cannot both deliver and provide electricity. It had to be decoupled. And so Central Hudson, all they do is they deliver electricity to your home and make sure you always have it. If there's storms, you know, they're the ones maintaining um, the power lines and whatnot. Um, but what they would do is the default, they would just buy, they would search the market and find, uh, you know, the best prices basically the market has to offer for folks. Um, but it wasn't clean or renewable energy. It's generally mostly fossil and nuclear. And so that's such a that's the default. Um, or folks, if they didn't want that default option, they can choose a third party supplier, which is an ESCO is a third party company, third party supplier, um, a common or, or a more popular one is Green Mountain Energy. Um, and and so third party suppliers, the only there are only two reasons people would choose an ESCO. Um, one would be for a better price, um, and two would be to propagate renewable energy in the New York State grid. Um, and that brings us to CCA. And so that's the third option. Um, and so it's a new option folks can do. It's, it's a, a new default option, essentially. And again, it acts as a, a third party. Um, it, it, it's a, in this, in, you know, in 2019, it was direct energy. And I'll show you who your new supplier will be for this round. Um, but those are basically the three options you can have for electricity supplies. Working towards the next slide. Okay, great. So, um, so this is uh, the letter that residents and small businesses will receive um, before community tourist aggregation goes live. So this is called the welcome and opt out letter. And it basically demonstrates what the program is about, um, information on how to find out more. And I'll show you that information a bit later, but uh, calling us, Hudson Valley Energy, our helpline, um, and walking you through the supply options. And so basically this letter is great because it, 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 it educates everyone what's going on and it gives you the 30 day it gives you notice of the 30 day opt out period, which means if you don't, once you receive this letter, if you don't want to be in the program at all, within that 30 day period, you can opt out. Um, as an important note to know, you can opt out at any time, even if you're in the program for one month or 12 months, you can opt out at any time, no fee. But there is a 30 day grace period if you just don't want to be in it at all. And that's what this um, letter you know, tells you. I'd like to just emphasize again that that this letter is just going to go out to the eligible eligible residents and small businesses so everyone who's eligible and would be rolling into this program either because they participate in the last cca or they're available now um, are going to receive receive this letter in the mail and it's going to be mailed out on may 15th as we can see by the by the date yes thank you hannah thank you for that clarification awesome All right, trying to go to the next slide. Okay, here we go. And so this is what how CCA will appear. It'll it'll just be through your central Hudson bill. Um, and so on the top here is delivery. This has nothing to do with CCA. This is just all central Hudson costs. So it's based off of your usage and the the various costs that are associated with that. Where um, CCA comes into play is that there will be a uh, uh, the new fixed rate under electric supply charge, and it's based off your usage. So the rate will be the same throughout, and I'll get to the rate in a second, um, but it'll just be demonstrated under the supply section. And so your usage changes from month to month, but the rate will stay the same. The other thing, the other thing to add to that is that um, Central Hudson only makes 
money on delivery. They have not made money on supply since deregulation in the late 1990s. So choosing a third party supplier or participating in the CCA does not take money away from central Hudson. That's a common question that we receive. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Yeah, central Hudson does not make any money on it at all. Um, just the delivery again. Cool, next slide. Cool, so now I'm gonna show you a little bit about the, the various partners that are involved in Hudson Valley Community Power, which is the name of this, uh, you know, this community choice aggregation cohort, if you will, that Town of Clinton is in. So um, here are all the partners. You can see the community partners on the left here, um, and just to name a couple, you know, the city of Beacon, the village of Cold Spring, city of Poughkeepsie, um, including the town of Clinton. These are all municipalities um, in CCA right now and, and renewing as well. Um, on the bottom, these are the program partners. And so Jewel, or, or, uh, which is the company Hana works for, is the administrator. Um, and so they are the ones negotiating uh, fixed rates and, and securing contracts with these supplier supply companies on behalf of these communities. Um, Hudson Valley Energy is the company, the nonprofit I'm with. And again, we do the education and the outreach, hence this webinar right now, um, as well as handling the helpline, which I'll show you uh, later. Um, and again, the helpline helps people with any information and opting out and things like that. Um, Central Hudson, of course, is the utility. And then Columbia Utilities is the chosen supplier for this round. Um, and so those are all the participating partners in this effort. Excellent. So uh, these are the rates that Hudson Valley Community Power has secured um, for electricity, again, through a competitive bidding process facilitated by Juul. And this bid will remain stable for three years, meaning it's fixed for three years. Uh, and it enables you to power your home or business with 100% renewable energy. Um, so Columbia, again, Columbia Utilities Power will be the new supplier. And it will begin on your first meter read after July 1st this year. Um, and again, the new rate will remain fixed for a 36-month period through June 2024, um, or as long as you stay in the program. If you stay through the whole program until June 2024, but if you decide to opt out for whatever reason, you can again. Um, and so these are the fixed, renewable fixed rates provided by Columbia. You can see it over here, 6.573 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, um, and then you can see the 12 month Central Hudson price to compare. Um, the last 12 months was a peculiar 12 months, as we all know from COVID. Um, and so COVID actually did have a, a strong impact on the supply market and prices um, did go down, but we do expect that this fixed rate, this 100% renewable rate will be very competitive um, throughout the duration of the 36 months. Um, just last month, Central Hudson bought supply on behalf of its customers uh, uh, close to 10 cents, I believe is 9.89 cents per kilowatt hour, just to give you an idea. So this fixed rate is very competitive um, with, uh, you know, sometimes the central Hudson's higher or lower. Um, and then there's also a standard fixed rate. It's not renewable. It's mostly fossil and nuclear, but it is a little bit cheaper. So if you're looking for a strictly cost effective rate, standard is the one for you. And again, just to go a little bit more into that, again, just the, the two options you can choose from. You basically have three options if you're eligible. And again, if you're eligible, you'll be your default will be 100% renewable unless you state otherwise. So if you want 100% renewable, renewable, basically you do nothing. If you want standard, you can opt down. And again, that's not renewable, it's mostly fossil and nuclear, but it's a more cost effective option. Um, and oh yeah, we'll get to that actually later. So next steps for Clinton community members for you to know. Um, so the welcome opt-out letters again will be sent to eligible customers on May 15th, uh, very soon. Um, and I do want to. I didn't. I thought there might be a slide on this, but I do want to just um, emphasize that eligible customers are folks 
who, um, one basically who central Huston is already their default. Um, anyone who already is a part of an ESCO or a third party is not eligible. They can still join CCA, but they would have to leave their ESCO and come to CCA. Um, another way folks would not be eligible is if they have a block on their central Hudson account um, and uh, a couple other ways as well, but those are the main ones. Um, anyone who's eligible again is if central Hudson is buying electricity on their behalf, um, any resident uh, or small business. Um, the grace period, the 30 day grace period to opt out is through June 13th. Um, and again, the, the, you'll get the letter on May 15th around there and you have 30 days if you don't want to be in the program at all, not even one month. Um, but again, if you can opt out at any time with no cost, no matter how long you're in the program or little. 100% um, of the you know of the renewable option is New York State Renewable Energy, which is wonderful. It's all generated in New York State. Um, and the program rate on Central Hudson Bill will begin again after July 1st. So that's where we're at. So expect the opt-out letter on May 15th. And there's plenty of information and resources. Um, oops, did I skip the slide? Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the other way. Oops, sorry, Hannah. Um, this is the other way to opt out as well through the 30 day grace period. So in that welcome and opt out letter on May 15th, there will be on the top of the letter, there'll be this opt out card. So in order to opt out, you can mail this card in um, or simply you can call our, our hotline or Hudson Valley Community Power Program. You, you'll probably get me on the phone and that's the number here is 845-859-9099 extension two. Um, you can dial extension two is the Hudson Valley Community Power Program, but you can reach us at any extension. Um, and uh, or you could go to our website, HudsonValleyCommunityPower.com and submit your information there. So three ways to opt out and it's all simple and we're just a phone call away if you're confused. One other thing. So in the in the letter, you'll have this this opt out card. And if you can see on the top top right of the card here, there's the pre enrollment ID. And there will be a specific number that is um, that you're identified by. Um, if you do want to opt out during the 30 days and you do not want to mail in the card, you know, you want to either call the hotline or you want to submit the information through the website, keep keep this opt out reply card on hand. Don't throw it out. So you can use that pre-enrollment ID um, so you can identify yourself and opt out of the program. Um, you can also use that to change mm -hmm. your your supply offering if you want to go to the standard option. This opt-out card though itself, the one that you receive that you can mail back with the prepaid envelope, this is only to be used if you want to opt out of the program. You can't use it to change your supply option. To Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Um, and again, just to not panic, if you happen to throw out this opt-out card by accident, you can still easily um, opt out or change your supply option, with no problem as well. Um, all right, next slide. So here are the common questions, our promised common questions um, that might be rattling around for you. Um, so first, so does does this, meaning CCA, replace my utility company? No, it does not. Um, your utility company, Central Hudson, um, is still going to be delivering and maintaining and making sure that you always have electricity. And again, like we saw in the previous slide, the um, the CCA rate will be reflected in the supply portion of your uh, Central Hudson bill. Um, why are you, are you doing this? How can you do this? Um, again, this is a public benefit. So it gives folks um, a lower cost option to support renewable energy in a way that they're protected. There are no contracts, no individual contracts signed. You know, there are no penalty fees or anything like that. So again, and it's also a way for New York State to achieve um, climate goals. Um, will this save me money? It's not guaranteed. Again, the, the price is very competitive. Um, and so it's not guaranteed just because we can't predict the market, um, but it's very possible. If, if anything, it's going to be very comparable or competitive to what you were paying previously for 100% renewable. The um, other thing, the other thing that's... Oh, sorry, go ahead. 
The other thing that um, is nice about it is that with that fixed rate, that's predictable so that you know that you have that rate accessible to you for the next three, three years. Of course, your usage, as Jake po uh, pointed out in the previous slide, your, your usage every month fluctuates, but you'll know what rate it's being charged again month after month after month. Um, when Central Hudson buys on your behalf, again, that, that rate does fluctuate month to month. It can go low, it can go very high, it can be somewhere in the middle. Um, it varies. Absolutely. Yep, thank you. Um, so am I locked into this for three years? Nope. Again, you could exit freely at any time for no cost. Um, what happens after three years? Will the rate go crazy? Um, no, the contract ends. And then it goes back to the utility to what was to Central Hudson or CCA can repeat, which is happening right now with the town of Clinton. Um, but you'll just go otherwise if the town of Clinton were not to repeat for some reason after three years, you just go back to Central Hudson. Um, where does the energy come from? Again, it's renewable electricity from New York State. It's mostly hydropower. Again, all generated in New York State. Um, very little wind and solar, but more coming onto the grid. Um, does this work with my existing solar system? Yes, it does. And actually, by law, even if you have a solar system on your house or property, you still do need to be connected to the grid. Um, and so you can still be in CCA. And the scenario that makes, uh, you know, that, you know, why being part of CCA is great still is because if there's some months where your solar system does not produce enough electricity to, uh, you know, support your household, then any excess or over electricity that you need for the house will be taken from 100% renewable sources if you're in CCA. So that would still be aligned with your values of supporting renewable energy. Just to um, just to clarify on this last one, just to be clear, if you're connected, if you have so you have a solar system and you're connected to the grid, if you're connected to the grid, you're required to have a supplier. There are some people out there who have who are completely off grid and have solar and or other sources. But if you are connected to Central Hudson, which most people are, and you have whether you whether or not you have solar, you have to have a supplier option. Again, could be Central Hudson buying on your behalf can be third-party supplier or also known as an ESCO, or you can choose the CCA program. Thank you, Hannah. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. And if, um, if you have any questions, um, again, you can always call us at 845-859-9099, extension 2. Find more information on our website, HudsonValleyCommunityPower.com. Again, my name is Jake Mitchell, and you could email us as well at cca at hudsonvalleyenergy.org. Um, and so, yeah, that's a wrap, and we are here to take any questions if anyone has any. Hannah, do we get any questions? I see, the questions? I see that someone has their hand raised. Um, do you see the questions box? You can put in questions through there or through the chat, and we can answer you. I think it's a, a Byron. You have your hand raised. Oh, uh, looks like Jeffrey Brandsberg was having trouble with the audio. Sorry about that, Jeffrey. I hope you were able to hear some of that. Yeah, I, I did. I did respond. To, okay. um, yeah, if you do have a question, just go ahead and put it in the question box um, there, and we'll uh, we'll answer it for you. And now I see Supervisor Oberly has his hand raised. Are you able to put a question or, or something into the chat? I can. So actually, I'm going to unmute the supervisor. I think you can speak now, Supervisor Oberly. Oh, okay. The question I had was you didn't talk anything about the community solar. I think it's uh, advantageous to at least mention it briefly because. People do get confused between the two products. Of, of course. Absolutely. Go um, ahead, Hannah, if you're about to. I'm actually I'm going to go to that other slide. Okay. That we have. 
Okay, here, here you go. That's a that's a great question, especially because there was community solar offering and there is some confusion. So um, as you saw before, Jake talked through the supply section. These are now, if you can see on the, the left-hand side, there are the options of Central Hudson, a third-party supplier, or CCA. You can choose one of those options from that column. From the other column, you have your choices about solar. These are separate decisions. And again, you can only have one from each option. You can have one supplier option and you can have make one choice about solar you're able to have no solar you can have your own solar um, at your at your home or business and you can also participate in community solar which is either a subscription or a purchase of a solar farm so um, these are two different two different offerings um, they do work together so um, as Jake was talking about in the frequently asked questions, some people say, you know, they ask if I have solar on my roof, can I be part of the CCA? The answer is yes. If you have community solar, you're subscribed to a solar farm, you can, you still have to have um, a supplier, electricity supplier. So um, yes, you can still participate in the CCA. Thank you, Hannah. Welcome. Um, you didn't mention that community solar is a uh, voluntary opt-in. Yes, yes. So, um, so the the program, the electricity supply program, is designed as an opt opt out program. Um, and the reason why we can do that again is because of deregulation. Um, this the state has decided the utility is the default, they buy on your behalf, and with the CCA, the municipalities are able to choose a favorable other default, another choice. Um, with Community Solar, the offering that's currently in, um, in Clinton, if you know people have to sign their own contract, they have to opt in and make the choice to, again, install solar on their home or business or sign up for a solar farm. Byron, are you able to put the question in the chat? I'm not sure if he's still here. I think Byron I, is still here. Are there any any other questions? Um, supervisors, anything else you'd you'd like to add or or a question that you get a lot that you'd like us to answer? Well, the, the other question, the other comment I had is the benefit of taking up uh, community solar through the the jewel operation here, so to speak, is the funding that the town gets for every person signing up, which can be used for you know uh, sustainability activities. Yes, yes, that is correct. Clinton Clinton has raised some money over the last couple of months for that. Again, one more thing that I do want to, to go through one more time is, um, is what makes somebody eligible or not eligible. So the you would not be eligible for this program if you already have a third party supplier. Again, as you can see here on the on the left side, you already have an, a contract with another electrical supplier. If you have a block or a freeze on your central Hudson account, if you um, have a demand meter or use a, a lot, a lot of electricity, that's different. And um, and there are and there are a couple other a couple other scenarios where you would not receive receive this letter. I'm going to go back to the question slide. That's that's the last question that I've seen seen come through. Um, Jake, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, I just want to thank you, everyone, for joining. Hope that was helpful. Um, thank you, Supervisor Oberly, for joining as well and speaking. Um, yeah, again, if you have any questions, we're, you know, we're always here at the program helpline, again, at 845-859-9099, extension 2. 
and that you can find that number on our website, HudsonValleyCommunityPower.com. So this is certainly not your last chance to get information on CCA or Community Solar. Um, please don't hesitate to call us or reach out if you uh, have any other questions. We also have a Facebook page for Hudson Valley Community Power, and um, we have we will have two events that will be hosted um, remotely during the opt-out period as well. So if you receive that letter, you'll receive also the two dates that are later later in the month um, for you to attend. Um, and Clinton will also be sharing information. We'll post information on their website and make sure everybody everybody gets the information they need. Excellent. Thanks, Hannah. I actually saw Barbara has a question. She asked, if you opt out, can you opt in at a later date? And uh, the answer is yes, you actually can uh, with CCA. So if you opted out and decided to want to get back in, well, you know, as long as there's time left in the program, um, you can absolutely opt in and you can do so online or you can give us a call at the helpline and we can do so for you. You can, and not only can you can you opt out and opt back in. You're also, if you you start out with the program and you decide you want to have the standard option for supply, you can choose that option, and then you can say, oh well, in six months I want to go back to the renewable option and switch switch to that. You have so much flexibility with this program, and you're not personally signing a contract. That's one of the consumer protections in this, um, is that. This is something that your municipality and other municipalities in the Hudson Valley want to make accessible to you um, with as much protection as possible. You have that, that choice and no commitment. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's the last question I see here. Um, thank you, everyone. Again, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any other questions to the helpline or uh, Facebook or email. So thank you so much. Thank you, Hannah, as well. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night, everyone.